Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome to a somewhat special episode. Before we start, I would like to thank you all for the feedback on my Druid video. I really hoped it would be well received, but the result really exceeded my expectations. Unfortunately, all other channel activities were pretty much on hold during the making of the video, so I thought I'd make it up to you today by uploading not one, but two fully commented replays featuring Prinz Heinrich in Ranked. The plan was to upload some other replays first, but I thought these two Heinrich games, which I played recently, were too entertaining not to share them with you as soon as possible. Be warned though, the first replay is my first match in 6 weeks, so you will be able to tell I was pretty rusty. Now, Prinz Heinrich, what's not to like? Well, on paper the ship does look mediocre, a modest amount of hit points, average maneuverability, the second lowest AP and HE DPM of all tier 7 BBs and even the alpha strike is not really impressive. But her set of consumables, particularly the access to Hydro and the fast damage control team, as well as the improved secondaries really make up for a lot of her weaknesses, especially in tier 7 ranked where you are guaranteed top tier all the time and close quarters combat happens basically every match. If you know me, you know I'm not a BB player, but if even I can have consistent success with this ship, you know it must be pretty good. Let's quickly review my commander build and the upgrades I have installed. I'm running Lütjens with what I consider a full secondary build without any compromises. With the one caveat that I don't run IFHE because I don't like my fire chance being halved. At tier 7 most cruisers and BBs have 25 or 26 mm plating respectively, so even the smaller caliber secondaries of Prinz Heinrich can penetrate them already. Specking into IFHE may be useful if you get up tiered, but that's obviously not going to happen in this ranked season, so I opted for a build that specializes in setting as many fires as possible. I'm also taking the rudder upgrade instead of damage control system mod 2, because I feel like fires and floodings are really not a concern for Prince Heinrich due to the fast damage control team, and the faster rudder makes CQC, including dodging torps, a lot more comfortable. Speaking of CQC, you can see how small the maps are in the tier 7 map pool. I barely left my spawn and the alpha and bravo caps are already almost completely covered by my secondaries. But that doesn't mean we want to get stuck in brawling prematurely, unlike the enemy Gneisenau now which has already overextended by pushing into 4 ships. Now I could have played more aggressively here and faced my German counterpart directly, but I felt like her fate was already sealed and instead I wanted to push the B cap without exposing myself to torpedoes thrown at me by the two destroyers at Alpha and Bravo. One could argue that I popped my Hydro a little bit too early here in case I really want to push into Bravo, but I was afraid of torpedoes heading through the small gap between the islands towards me and I have to admit that my spidey senses were a bit out of practice after such a long break, so I figured it's better to be safe than sorry. If things go as planned, we still have about a minute of hydro left for our push into the cap and that's hopefully sufficient to scare away any destroyers. My goal is not necessarily to take the cap, but rather to open up another firing angle on the enemy Nelson because just like our Nelson, she seems to be playing more or less stationary, so I want to give her something else to think about instead of just pointing her nose at both of us if we remained in the same position. With her massive nose and superstructure, Nelson is a prime target for Prinz Heinrich, especially if we manage to get close enough to her to use our secondaries and I really would like to take her out as long as the enemies are busy farming our British battleship. 
We just lost our gallant in Charlie, which means the New Mexico is pretty much on her own in the south against an Akatsuki and a Lazo, which is basically a Shapayev with less armor, a ship notorious for being a ferocious fire starter. So we need to make something happen and have to help out our American ally. Mahydro is catching in the torps of the Akatsuki early enough so that we can maneuver to dodge them. I'm giving broadside to the Nelson in the process, but she's so focused on our Nelson that we are getting away with it. The thing is, I would be fine with being the center of the enemy's attention for a moment, at least for as long as it takes our Nelson to disengage. We didn't have to use a single damage control team or repair party consumable so far and most of the enemies are concentrated in the north so pulling off that flank by going into Bravo will hopefully cause enough distraction to give our allies a breather. Our British opponent is gone but we also lost our second DD in Alpha and the Lazo immediately set two fires on my superstructure so our fast damage control team finally comes into play. Now you could say that I used the consumable too hastily here because I still had to expect two more sets of torpedoes but I was counting on her to torp the other gap to my left and apparently my gut feeling was right. Of course the Lazo did set another fire but she just got completely annihilated by our New Mexico and my HE salvo landed just in time for the kill secure. I'm sorry New Mexico if that was not intended I only loaded HE for the Akatsuki. Anyway, it's kind of a bummer that our Hydro has run out with a destroyer right next to us. I think my brain still hasn't processed that the Lazo died so quickly because after that HE salvo, I switched back to AP, although it was clear that we had to deal with the DD at this point. We catch the destroyer and surprisingly every single shell from our front turrets landed. If only it was the correct ammo type. We are definitely going to Etorps now and I could have turned to my port side in front of that island here to make up more ground in our pursuit of the Akatsuki but I was actually afraid that she would come around and rush me so I opted for a safer route. We get one more opportunity to shoot here, maybe one of my shells can make it through that little gap and we get a cheeky penetration on the superstructure. The New Mexico lands what looks like two more overpens. But for now she's safe, at least from us. I don't think the Akatsuki had an angle to torp me again. I'm just using my Hydro here to keep track of her and to push her away. However, our Nelson is only 10 kilometers away from her and has a clear line of sight, so she could possibly kill the Japanese destroyer, but she's not paying attention and I'm also not calling target on the Akatsuki, which might have helped, so she is probably getting away. Again, my ammo selection is pretty sloppy. At this point, I should have switched back to AP and I'm turning broadside to the Queen Elizabeth to shoot the Canarias, but I checked beforehand that the QE's turrets were not looking my way. However, all this time I thought the Canarias was this Pan-Asian tier 7 cruiser, whose name also starts with C, but I don't dare pronounce it, so I wanted to kill her at all costs before she could supposedly smoke up again, and that's also why I underled her so terribly twice, because I just didn't realize she was able to go backwards so fast with her speed boost. We just ate yet another torp in spite of my hydro being active and are still shooting HE at broadsides, but since I'm reloading AP now, it looks like I finally accepted that the Akatsuki is not revealing herself again anytime soon. We still have a reasonable amount of hit points left and the Queen Elizabeth really put herself into a position where there is no escape for her. After killing her we do have more ships than the opponents for the first time in a long time. But with two DDs left the match will probably come down to a game of hide and seek and ring around the rosy. 
We have one hydro charge left for the late game and even though I've been eating torps this game at almost every possible opportunity, I'm more concerned about my teammates. One torpedo of either the Anshan or the Akatsuki is enough to sink our Makarov. Actually the Anshan might even be able to simply gun her down. And well, my New Mexico is neither spotting a camo nor any signal flags as far as I can tell, but at least she seems to be a good shot. You're probably familiar with my in-game name at this point and in my book the Akatsuki is a very capable DD in the right hands, so this game is far from over. Unfortunately I did bump into our New Mexico which means I lost a lot of speed and the American BB has to lead the charge into Bravo now, but as long as my Hydro is on cooldown I am actually okay with it, considering she does not only have more health than me but also the superior torpedo protection. Now the question is really if we should converge all in the middle or, considering we have three ships left, would it not be better to have one ship protecting each capture zone? I would really like to utilize my Hydro to protect my teammates, but at the same time there is so much island cover in the middle that allows for a point blank top rush that my Hydro wouldn't be able to save either of my teammates in time anyway I'm afraid. The good news are that particularly New Dawn is so claustrophobic that it's unlikely for the enemy DDs to pull off an ambush on one of us without exposing themselves to the rest of my team, as long as we stay reasonably close together, so it might be one of the few circumstances where the motto Apes Together Strong is actually the way to go. The New Mexico has already caught one torpedo and expressed her suspicion in the chat that there are not one but two destroyers ahead of her, given the amount of torpedoes coming her way, but provided that the Akatsuki is running fill the tubes and adrenaline rush, she can spit out 9 torps in under 60 seconds now. However, I'm totally caught off guard by the presence of the Anshan at my port side, considering that both DDs launch sets of three torps at a time, the New Mexico could have been totally right and I would have never expected the Pan-Asian destroyer there. It's kind of funny how she managed to sneak past our lines but then walks into me, disregarding her concealment, but well that mistake has probably happened to all of us before when we were too eager to get as close as possible for a torpedo attack. As we come around the island however, she makes the same mistake a second time and I fire all available guns before she gets into her smoke again, knowing that my back turret will only hit a rock and that was probably a mistake I should have used only my front turrets here so that I could have used my fourth turret for blind fire, but we got lucky and our secondaries finished her off. At the same time the Akatsuki leaves her cover to attack the American Dreadnought. It's more than likely that she will get the kill at this range, but it's still a desperate move considering that she's now exposed to our return fire. My turrets are turning awfully slowly, but my auxiliary armament finished her off before I even got to shoot my main guns. Whew, well, that was kind of a premature ending. Mentally I was definitely set for a slower late game with a few dozen torpedoes to dodge and some kind of war of nerves or psychological warfare between the islands, but with 6 kills I definitely can't complain and I think after such an anticlimactic finale I need to compensate you with another hopefully slightly tighter game, so let's not waste any time and jump straight into the next battle, this time on the map straight. And here we are, welcome to game number 2, you can see the matchmaking on screen, almost a complete tier 7 lineup, this game took place 2 days after the first one, I played a few other games in between but nothing noteworthy happened, it was just one sided storms for one side or the other, but I think this game right here was pretty entertaining. 
I felt a bit more comfortable because I had a bit more practice, so my reaction time shouldn't be quite as cringe-worthy as it was in the first game. Now as far as tactics are concerned, I've tried to go down the 8 line in a BB exactly once and in a Yukon of all things and the outcome was, um, yeah, let's not talk about it. So personally I would advocate playing straight conservatively and recommend to stay in your part of the map during the early game. Usually there's still plenty of time to brawl in the mid and late stages of a battle, although Prinz Heinrich and the likes of Scharnhorst and Gneisenau are certainly better suited than Yukon if you insist on bold early pushes. When it comes to cap contesting, my team should theoretically have the upper hand here. We have the radar advantage and a hydro DD, but you never know how things actually play out. By the way, after playing Jervis for one game, I was remembered of how bad her concealment is and honestly surprised. 6.4 km is pretty rough at tier 7 if you consider that ships like Haida with 5.5 km concealment and similar firepower exists, but yeah, there's a reason she got removed from sail. The enemy destroyers were a bit faster in their home cap, so the red team has a slight point advantage, but it shouldn't be a big deal. The match is usually decided by the fact which team suffers less casualties while fighting for the Bravo cap. And our DDs are heading straight into the action, so I'm ready to support them. If you check the minimap, you can see that there's a York closing in on the Bravo cap. Now, I'm really no expert on low and mid-tier maps and can't really assess whether that's a smart position in ranked or not. In general, you see a lot of players bow tank in the weirdest positions, but if she just stays there and maybe even gets a smoke screen from one of her destroyers, she could definitely threaten our DDs with her long range hydro. So I'm pinging my DDs to get back because they are both right on top of each other and them being hydroed at the same time could result in a disaster. Fortunately, the Yorg moved away, but our DDs are still spotted by the enemy Z31. My main battery salvo missed, but we are about to set a permanent fire with our secondaries on the German destroyer. It's still way too early for an actual push, but if we angle correctly, we can remain relatively close to the center and use the strengths of our ship to make it as hard as possible for our opponents to take the Bravo cap back. And as long as one of our DDs is in the cap and can provide spotting, it's not just mindless tanking. However, you can see that our Gajamada is leaving and we actually have a Shores flanking on the two line, so this is my cue to turn away. We have to get rid of that Russian cruiser as soon as possible because we can absolutely not allow her to sit behind us and spam HE with impunity. The Shores is relatively squishy and her armor can't withstand BB caliber shells, but if she manages to gain a little more distance, let's say like 15 or 16 kilometers, she can become a real pain to deal with because of her speed and range, which can be extended to over 20 km with a spotter plane. Our Southern Dragon, which is a Mayoko clone if I recall correctly, is already under tremendous pressure and she's likely the first casualty of the match, so it would be ideal if we at least managed to trade one for one. There's also a second aspect to it, whenever I notice that my team focuses on a target that can be tricky to deal with, and in fact quite a few of my teammates are now attracted by the shores, I often try to assist them in the destruction of that target, because the sooner my teammates can focus on other things, the better. Luckily we got a really good salvo on the shores and she should be gone in a few moments, so we can shift our attention back to the center. I'm not worried to be set on fire again anytime soon, so I did repair a single fire close to my superstructure. 
The enemies took the Bravo cap in the meantime, but my Jarvis is already reclaiming it and my team also got a second kill with the enemy Helena going down, which is really good news because that guy was a decent player. We are probably paying with our lasso for it, though as long as my team keeps trading one for one, things could really be worse. The enemy York is aggressively supporting her DDs at Bravo, so we need to discourage her from pushing further in. Unfortunately, my Jervis is spotted at the moment and actively firing, so it looks like we will be trading once again. Now that the opposition is thinned out a bit and more importantly, the enemy still have the cap advantage, it's time to finally take the initiative. We are about to lose our Atlanta as well, which had taken our position between the islands on the 8 line, so the match is in fact starting to look a bit worrisome. The enemy Easy is attacking me with her torpedo bombers and I will deliberately catch two of her torpedoes instead of one, because I want to put that island between me and the torpedoes of the two destroyers in Bravo as quickly as possible. Compared to the torps launched by the Z or the Shiratsuyu, the airborne torpedoes of Isis aircraft are but a tickle and we can afford to take a few of them if it means dodging far more dangerous torpedoes. The Z-31 revealed herself, so of course we took a shot and our Ismail landed the killing blow, which is excellent, with only one red destroyer being alive, our push will be a lot easier. Again I extinguished one fire to preserve my HP, because we still have a lot of DCP charges left and I'm not that afraid of being set on fire again, and my maneuver that I will perform when I pass at the island will very probably make the inevitable torpedo miss their mark, plus my hydro will be up any second now. What I'm disregarding at the moment is the whereabouts of the enemy Prince Heinrich, she could very well be flanking us and pop up on my broadside, which would jeopardize our plans and put us in a bit of a crossfire and of course it turns out that our German counterpart is exactly where she is the most dangerous for us, so we have to angle against two BBs at the same time, which is not ideal. In fact, however, it could have been worse if the Easy had moved in the other direction, the way both BBs are positioned right now. We can maintain relatively good angling against both of them and the Heinrich, which has considerably fewer hit points than us, is also exposing herself to our return fire. Though the torpedoes sent by the Shira are forcing us to present our broadside, so the Prinz Heinrich is gonna get the perfect angle for a painful salvo against us if we don't kill her before she can reload and of course we don't. The Easy is also sending torpedo bombers again. But all things considered, if we can finally kill the German BB with our next salvo, the outcome of that little brawl is really not that bad, because we managed to avoid all torps by the IGN destroyer and we all know how much Japanese torpedoes hurt. I was aiming for the superstructure here to make sure that we get the kill and with the Prinz Heinrich going down, we turned the game into a 3 versus 2, so our odds of winning look pretty good. Our Gajamada is currently capturing Charlie, so we should soon have all the trump cards in our hands and hopefully we can just sit on our cap advantage and have the enemies push into us. Mahagro revealed the Shiratsuyu, not that her location was a secret, but pushing her even further away can only be beneficial for my team and allows our pan-Asian ally to capture Charlie safely. Understandably, the Easy is also running away and it looks like my Ismail is going to intercept her. I'm a little bit concerned because our DD kept throwing AP at the kiting battleship and now the Gajar started engaging the enemy destroyer and is still shooting armor piercing rounds. I was considering to tell her in chat to switch to HE, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought it was a lost cause. And even though she eventually switched to the correct ammo type, we lost her for a mega 2k damage dealt to the Shira. 
I hadn't loaded HE either, but I didn't expect the Japanese DD to still be spotted when my reload was finished. And without gun feeder it would have been pointless to switch to HE, so I just fired what I had in my barrels. As I was not afraid of the Shiratsuya's torpedoes, I again did not hesitate to repair a single fire. I don't plan to pursue her, but want to go back to the center, as I expect our Ismail to run the easy and the game should be coming down to a 1 vs 1. However, our Ismail got death strike instead, absolutely mind blowing, so now I have to deal with two enemies and cannot simply run away from the DD. I think it's mandatory to hold the middle cap as long as possible and the easy will probably go straight for it. So I'm still heading towards Bravo to engage her in CQC, but even if she wasn't heading for Bravo, that would still be the only logical route to take. Our point advantage is too small and there's still too much time left on the clock that I can't play it safe and have to take a risk. Now you may say, what's the big deal? Prince Heinrich eats easy alive in close quarters combat and that's generally true, but with the insured spotting by the DD, the easy knows exactly where I am and how to catch me and she could play it smart and just point her nose directly at me and go for the ram. And even though Prince Heinrich's torpedo angles are excellent for a BB, they are not good enough to prevent you from being rammed if the enemy is heading straight for you. So in any case I won't go for a drive-by, but rather turn away as long as I can and risk a broadside shot from the easy and just hope for the best rather than the guaranteed ram. I can still throw my torpedoes at her once she's committed to ramming and hope for a few torpedo hits, after all Ize is a pretty wide ship. Plus I overmatch her nose and my secondaries are blasting while I turn away from her. Interestingly the Japanese destroyer has also decided to open fire outside of her smoke screen, so my secondaries make quick work of her. Our turn didn't cost us many hit points and the easy was just melting away under the bombardment of all our weapons and we secure the win with a double strike. Explosive finish, I hope this finale was a little more entertaining than the previous one. As you can see Prince Heinrich is an absolute monster in ranked and if you know how to play the games with her are not only kinda easy but also a lot of fun, although that doesn't mean you can turn every game around. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I would really appreciate it and I hope to catch you next time. See you soon and take care. Okay, quick fun fact, you may remember that I created this blue screen for my Druid video, including a working QR code, right? However, the QR code does not lead to Rick Astley never gonna give you up. Such a wasted opportunity, just kill me.